that's like the... Yeah, it is. Yeah. Professional photographer, and he took the picture for me. He, he had heard the prologue before, but that's not Cobb Mountain. That's actually the Black Forest. Oh, uh-huh. I hope this is going to be okay after Welcome to the book opening of, and I gotta look at this to make sure I say it right because you might not pay me if I say it right. <laughs> the Secret on Cobb Mountain. And I should be holding it up. Because even though the picture's on the cake, if I hold the cake up, well, <laughs> not a good idea. I'm told that most of you know the story behind the writing of this book. That, ah, a lot of you are say, shaking their heads no. They haven't been listening to you after all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read it just as Kit wrote it. <laughs> One dark, dreary winter a couple years ago, Kit's husband, Tony. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> was Thank very you. ill. Being housebound and suffering from a seasonal affective disorder, Kit spent her days and nights by the fire writing. Finally, winter turned into spring, and she had literally written herself out of a depression, and the secret on Cobb Mountain was born. <laughs> A little later, there are going to be drawings for a couple of door prizes. And you will also be able to purchase a book and have it autographed by Kit. But for now, we're going to have a few words from Kit herself. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming tonight. It means so much to me to have you all here. I was very excited about getting my book published. But I'm very excited that so many of you came to help me celebrate it. And um, I wanted to, there's a, some things in here that I wanted to read. Um, there's people that I needed to thank. <clears throat> um, I want to thank special things to my sister, Billy Ann Bauer who told me when I was very young that I could be anything I wanted. Although she says she doesn't remember saying those words to me, I'll never forget that she did. <laughs> she, has, she has not only always encouraged my many endeavors, but she's been a constant in my life and has cheered me on. And to my sister, Donna Lynette Stevens, my youngest sister, who, although I can't think why, always looked up to me and expected good things of me. She's been a constant source of love and approval, and I hope she can say the same thing about me. They weren't able to be here um, tonight, um, but I'm videotaping this so that I can send it to them. They don't know that I wrote that. I, but I also want to thank Billy and Donna both for not only for helping me edit the book, but their eagerness to do so. Without their help, you would be trying to make sense out of countless errors in, spe in spelling and grammar. And I'm very thankful to my good friend, Al Smyers, who encouraged, whose encouragement motivated me to publish, and his advice pointed me to the right direction. 
And last but not least, a big thank you to my good friend Jeff Tangen of Jeff Tangen Photography, who provided the perfect picture for the cover. And I want to read the dedication. This book is dedicated to my husband and soulmate, Tony, who listened each night to my daily writings with heartfelt words of encouragement, who was scared with me while I wrote myself into and out of the dark Lake County woods, and who cheered on my main character, worrying that he was going to mess up and not get the girl. <laughs> <laughs> if it weren't for Tony, I wouldn't know how to write a love story. which one is mine when I read it. <laughs> okay, Dr. Robert Gardner of Lucerne, California writes, interesting read with good insights into human behavior. Twists as good as a Philadelphia soft pretzel. <laughs> Sharon Wiley of Clear Lake says, I read the prologue and was hooked. I needed more. Carol Becker of Lakeport says, was totally involved right from the beginning. And Kay, I want to say the name right, Gomer. Gomer. From Corsville, California. Oh, okay. that's my sister. Great plot, a good read. I sat down to read the book and didn't put it down except to get coffee until I finished it. It got my attention right away. It was a very good, it is a very good story. A different way to look at suicide. I have to say, when I read the prologue, the subject and the subject was about suicide, I didn't know if I would like it. It's an important subject, but uncomfortable for me. However, it was addressed in an interesting and informative way, and as I got into it, the mystery got me hooked. I found the characters well-developed and engaging, and it kept me entertained until the end. Kit DeConti is a very good writer. I especially like her description of life being like cotton candy. Beautiful, picturesque description of the Clear Lake area. I know this book will be a big success.